a very easy continuum is that if you don't manage the stress in your life, you will weight, gain weight and you will lose your memory. So stress has a, a negative impact on both our fat cells and how we manage um, our fat in our body, and it also has a really huge impact on our brains and our, and our, and our memory. So the, the instinct of the brain is to eat. And, when we, and it's like following the satiety guide, is when we're hungry, we need to eat. And the first thing I tell anybody who comes to me who's looking to manage their weight more effectively is to get on their yoga mat. I found that it's the most powerful tool in weight management that I can recommend. And if you haven't experienced yoga, you're gonna be like, why is bending and stretching important to weight management? And it's for a couple reasons. One is the deep abdominal breathing calms you down. Whenever you feel calmer, you're gonna make better decisions about your food choices. If you, know, if you feel anxious, if you feel stressed out, you tend to make emotional decisions not based on how hungry you are. So the, the abdominal breathing in and of itself actually changes your brain chemistry, releases more serotonin, less cortisol. When we calm down, we, we eat less. The second, way, the second way it supports that is reconnecting with yourself. If you aren't connected with yourself, you don't know when you're hungry and you're full, you can't ever monitor where you are in the satiety guide, right? And it's not just with anorexics and bulimics that have trouble with this, it's with compulsive overeaters, with people that eat for the wrong reasons. It's because we haven't, we've disconnected with our ability to hear ourselves. We don't know if we're hungry and we're full, we don't know when to stop eating, when to start eating. So what yoga does is it creates an increased awareness of yourself. And when you learn to listen to yourself better on the mat, it tends to permeate into um, your everyday life. And then the third way that yoga helps, so deep breathing, reconnecting, and then the third way is um, it teaches us to be less reactive. So if you think about it, this whole rewiring of our brain is what yoga is. In fact, um, the scientific phrase for yoga is cognitive behavior modification. We're modifying, rewiring our conscious brain so that we're, when we're in a hip opener, and we're in pigeon, and, we're, and the teacher is like leaving us there for a long time, and there's all this sensation, and we don't run out of the room. We're practicing non-reactivity, and that non-reactivity permeates into every area of your life. Um, my yoga teacher used to always say, how you react to anything is how you react to everything. Mm -hmm. So if you freak out when your toast burns, what's gonna happen when your house burns down, right? So it teaches you non-reactivity. And this non-reactivity is, you know, humans are the only ones that have this conscious brain. We can override our emotional brain, but we're gonna be way better, we're gonna be way more successful using our conscious brain if we use these tools of trying to keep our blood sugar at a steady place so that we're not constantly reverting, oh my gosh, I'm starving, I can eat everything in, in sight. I'm gonna eat more of it, I'm gonna make bad choices, because I'm so hungry. So conscious um, brain. And um, statistics show that as a population, we actually only use our conscious brain 5% of the time. So we have a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. And that's what yoga teaches us, is to make more conscious decisions. Um, 